Hey everyone, Allegorics here with another Escape from Tarkov Arena video. The time is finally here. The wipe we have been talking about for the last couple of weeks being released right now as we speak. I'm here with it to talk about it right away. Just an update for you guys. If you didn't know, I did start streaming again every Monday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can check me out on Twitch. The link is on my YouTube page and in the description of this video. Also, remember that tomorrow, that's Thursday, starting at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, drops for Tarkov Arena are going to be live on Twitch all the way through March 3rd, so that's through Sunday. I am going to be live every single day, so you guys can get as many drops as you want whenever you're able to tune in. So with that being said, let's jump right into these patch notes and take a look at what's in store. So let's go ahead and go through these updates or as BSG would put it, udpates here. So patch 0.1.50, player profile. As we've already been told, this update features a full profile wipe. As part of this update, the progression of presets as well as player ARP has been reset. So we already knew that. However, your ARP will only be reset to the starting 1500 if you are under 2000 ARP. Profiles with less than 2000 ARP rating will be set to 1500. So that's going to be anywhere from 1 to 2000. Anything above that, ARP will be reset to 2000. Thousand. So if you've made it up into C tier a little further along, you do get a little bit of a boost starting out with this wipe. So nice and easy right there. Let's scroll on down here. We got a lot of changes to go over. Tier system and preset balances. The new tier system features the following changes. Remove the rating presets tab. The rating presets tab is the tab in pre-wipe where depending on your ranking D plus C, C+, and so on, where you get to choose various operators within that tab to play and unlock based off of your rating tier. Now, all presets, the Assault, CQB, Marksman, and Scout, have all been divided into three tier levels. Presets have been balanced within each tier. Several class and ranked presets have been removed. They don't dive into every single class preset balance here. That would be probably way too much to go over, so we're just going to have to jump in fresh and see what it looks like. All right, several class and ranked presets have been removed. I assume with part of balancing, they found that some classes maybe were not necessary and just had to be removed completely from the game. First two presets of each class are free by default, so no different than what we had originally. Each collectible preset is now attached to a specific class and tier. So if you are not aware, collectible presets are presets that you unlock via outside means, such as having Edge of Darkness and getting Arena, or during the drops, they're going to be releasing another collectible preset. So things that you collect over time, they're going to now be attached to a specific class and tier. So, you know, Rizzy might be under Assault in the new class, maybe he's under CQB. We'll get into that a little bit more later. It does touch on that down the list. Standardize the availability and amount of medicine and presets for each tier and class. They don't delve too much deeper into what this means exactly, but we can gather from this text that the meds in each tier are going to be similar for each class. So if you have five classes in tier one, they should all have a very similar med spread. I think that's great. Significantly reduce the number of frag grenades in all presets. I know this has been a very widely requested feature. There were quite a few frag grenades. We all know that flashbang stun grenades can be a little bit unreliable at times, so them reducing the number of frag grenades should be a good change here. And they said significantly, so I'm not sure if they're just using this as a balancing feature for maybe some of the weaker classes. It'll be interesting to see which ones they decide to give frag grenades. All right, so jumping on down to matchmaking here, you can now select one of three tiers when starting matchmaking. Whether you have tier one, tier two, or tier three unlocked, you would select one of those tiers to go into matchmaking with. No longer are you selecting these presets or tiers after you get into the match, you are selecting it beforehand, which is a great change because now matchmaking can see what you're selecting before and hopefully will match you to equally leveled players. All right, unlocking matchmaking in the next preset tier requires unlocking five presets of the current tier. That requires the player to play more classes, spread out the level a little bit, and throw down more on the battlefield. Some people 
may not be happy about this. I don't know. It, it maybe kind of forces you running kits that you don't want to play, but I do think it's a little bit more healthy for the meta. Maybe you'll find a kit that you thought you weren't going to enjoy that now you do enjoy. And it really just allows on BSG's end for more gameplay as well, for testing and just seeing how things perform. So all in all, I think that's pretty good. Matchmaking now accounts for player ARP and the selected preset tier. So now they are flat out saying that your ARP should directly affect your matchmaking. As we all know, this did not have a very big effect, if any at all. It was going off of your previous games played, averaging out the meta point level of each of your classes that you had played and putting you against people at, of that level. So now with the combined matchmaking of your selected tier before matchmaking and your ARP, there should be some very well balanced games. Reset tiers two and three will be temporarily locked from matchmaking in ranked games until there are enough players who have unlocked tiers two and three respectively. What this threshold is, I have no idea. I am not sure what they consider to be enough players. We will see here that probably for the first few days or so that you will only really be running into tier one lobbies. This does allude to the opening of the unranked system where you can test out your tier two and three kits. Team limit on picking duplicate presets. Players can now select only one identical preset per team for more balanced gameplay. Your team selected presets are marked in the presets list. By team, I am assuming they mean who you are queued up with and going into a match with. I do not believe that this takes into account when matchmaking. If you select the Butcher, for example, you're playing with two other teammates. Those other two cannot play the Butcher. However, it still might matchmake you into a Butcher on your team from another squad that queued in, whether it was a solo or a duo to fill in those last two slots. That's what it looks like it means to me. It might account for this on the back end when you're matchmaking and not matchmaking you with other players of that. If that is the case, I am not sure how well it's going to work out. It really is going to depend on player base. They're, they're adding so many parameters for matchmaking, which is a great step. But if you add too many in, it might create long searching times for matches. I do I do think it's a good change. I, I kind of wish they had limited it to two identical per team. I think that would have been pretty reasonable, but it looks like they really want to spread out the type of kits being used in each game. So I totally understand where they're coming from. I am just glad that that I was able to run a few games with my buddies running five man Ratatouille before this change. So that was a lot of fun. I have to assume that this is for ranked. It doesn't specify. I hope it's just for ranked. It would be pretty fun to still be able to do this in unranked. And of course, I assume you can probably do this in custom lobbies where you can select as many of whatever you want. Anyway, we jump on down to flexible preset unlock systems added the ability to select four presets for unlocking one in each class. This is what I was talking about in my last video, something that I've been talking about for weeks that I want to see in the game, so I'm really glad they're adding this. Experience to the unlockable preset is gained when playing as any of the available presets of the corresponding class. When you are working on one class, you will select or other presets that your experience will go into. So you can work on one class, unlock four others, have them spread out. You're not railroaded as much going down a single path. You get more of an option of what you will unlock and how you want to play the game and how you want to progress to the higher tiers. When playing with a collectible preset, it will level presets of corresponding class. So that goes back to the previous point up top where they did mention that collectibles will be assigned to certain preset tier trees. For in my example earlier, Rizzy being part of Assault, he may or may not be, that's just my guess, it will level presets of that class. So they just kind of consolidated how things are sorted and consolidated things a little bit more, made them more efficient and streamlined. The preset tree view is available via the button in the bottom menu. So I am hoping that this also allows us to maybe look at the preset tree while we're matchmaking and searching and all that good stuff. All right, moving right along, preset price and unlock balance. They recalculated the preset purchase cost based on the tier it belongs to. So I imagine they are just all being changed to be very similar amounts amongst the same tier. Increase the difference in cash rewards between players who contributed more to the victory and those who contributed less. If one player goes 15 and three and you got two players on the team who went like oh and eight the player who went 15 and three should definitely get rewarded a bit more especially if they lose certainly in the regards of cash and also arp i think I, I don't believe they touch on the arp differences but that is a step in the right direction i do hope and wonder if they are including assists in this yet 
or if it's just based off of KD. I know they have like headshot modifiers and you get extra cash for streaks and stuff like that. So we'll kind of have to see what this looks like when we actually jump in and start playing. All right, reduce the amount of experience for unlocking a preset. So yeah, round of applause. There's no numbers associated with this, but reducing the cost is always a good thing. You can unlock kits faster. People have more fun jumping from kit to kit, and it gives you a nice spread to choose from. So location selection. I like this change a lot. It might be a bit polarizing. I know there are a lot of players out there who really like playing their certain maps, but they increase the minimum number of locations to start matchmaking from one to four. So you can't queue in now just playing Equator or just playing Bowl you have to select four of the maps to play. So for you sawmill haters out there, you are still not required to click on that. It's only a four minimum. And they have the new map, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Painkiller's effect, reduce the color loss effect when using a painkiller. I don't know about you guys, but this has gone back and forth a lot over the last few weeks. There was a long period of time at the start where painkillers didn't do any effect like this. No color change, no graininess, anything. Very short stint where the black and white came back very strong and then they reduced it and I haven't noticed it since then. So I, I'm not really sure what this is going to end up looking like in the game. I, I'm not sure if you guys experienced the same thing. Jumping over into custom games, it's really cool that they're paying attention to this. If they want to move in that esports direction or open the game up for awesome content and creator stuff and just people to jump in test stuff have a good time really need to keep focusing on this custom game so this is a good step in the right direction we got a lot of new settings here preset tier co configuration so i can only assume that this means you can set what preset tiers are available which ones are available to be chosen you can ban presets or just make them unavailable switching off the kill cam is a very interesting one I imagine this to be frustratingly insane on Sawmill. This is a pretty cool option, like kind of more of a hardcore mode and just to kind of shake things up a little bit. Uh, configurable duplicate team preset limit. So this is what I was talking about earlier where I was hoping that they didn't touch custom games on this. You can actually choose what the duplicate team preset limit is. So if you do want to do five on five Goodmans or if that class even exists anymore, Ratatouille's, what have you, you can go crazy or you can limit it to where the games are maybe a little bit more balanced out. Configurable character skill level. I imagine this is based off of ARP or something of the like. I'm not entirely sure what they mean by this, but more configurations, the better as far as I'm concerned. Configurable number of rounds needed to win a match. Boilerplate stuff there. Pretty happy with that. And configurable team names. So that is pretty cool and very fun. So I'm glad that they added this. This is a great step in the right direction for custom games. And Holly freaking Luya fire mode changed the default fire mode for all weapons. Full auto is now set as default. I do not think I'm alone in having a full-fledged erection for this change. No longer do we have to scream full auto check at the beginning of the round in hopes that our team does not get killed by holding down their mouse button and only slinging out one bullet. I'm glad they did this. Definitely needed to happen. All right, jumping into locations. Added the new chop shop location for the team fight mode. All right, fix the culling issues on all locations. So this is for anyone who's unaware, this is just to kind of help performance and increase efficiency for the render of objects or what your operator can see just to increase performance overall, just general fixes and stability and efficiency. All right, remove the ability to vault out of bounds on all locations. Oh my god, finally. So as you all know at this point, I am sure it is no secret to everybody, just about every single spawn and so many other areas you can vault onto or get out of. It is insane. I hope they addressed all of them. We'll have to see. I'm sure people will find ways to do something but great change. Readjusted the logic of frag grenade spawns on all locations for all game modes according to the following rules. Grenades do not spawn on equator and chop shop and on all shootout locations. So I imagine this is just to cut down on the amount of explosives flying around in very small maps. I think that is a great change. It gets a little bit crazy if you have three, four, five, six grenades going off. Grenades do, however, spawn on Bay 5, Air Pit, Bull, and Sawmill. These maps are a little bit bigger, so it makes a little bit more sense that you're going to have grenades on these maps. Added a spot with 100% chance of grenade spawn in the center point of the location. Added two frag grenade spawn locations at equal distances between teams. Chance of grenade spawn is 100% at one of the two locations. All other item spawn points no longer contain frag grenades. So really, leaning into that limitation of frag grenades here, severely reducing how many operators have them in their presets, 
and scattering them on maps a little bit more balanced so that they are available if you do not have a frag grenade, but not in such a volume that there are still frag grenades everywhere. So great balancing, I think is totally fine. All right, so jumping into a couple of maps here, air pit slightly changed the geometry of the map. Regardless of the spawn side, players will reach the airplane at the same time. So shrinking or extending a little bit of the map just to make it a little bit more fair and balanced to get to the centerpiece of the map. Bull, they did the same thing with the helicopter. So players should be able to get to the helicopter at the same time, coupled with the fact that you can no longer allegedly jump out of the spawn early. That should be a fair fight for that helicopter. Or as my friends like to call it, the jet ski. This next section is very big. Those of you who play Escape from Tarkov will be pretty familiar with this armor and hitbox system. We are going to go over this, not in too much detail. I will go line by line and talk about it a little bit. However, as you'll see here at the bottom, there is a link that goes over this in a little bit more detail that I will actually link in the description. And I'm also gonna link a video that I have mentioned before in another one of my videos that really tests and delves into how armor actually works in Tarkov. And now that it is working the same way in Arena, I think it's really good information for you guys to have. The video is by Gigabeef. And in my opinion, it's just a really thorough top-down look at how the armor system works and the hitboxes. So I'm going to link that in the description as well. All right, so let's jump into that. So hitboxes, the head is divided into separate simple hit zones that coincide with the protection zones of helmets and masks. Three hit zones have been added to that head area, and that is the throat, neck, and face colliders. You can get shot in the neck and take certain damage, get shot in the throat, face. So as it says here, totally split up now. Thorax and stomach hit zones are divided into front, back, and sides, and the pelvic hit zone is divided into groin and buttocks. Hitting these areas inflicts damage to the stomach area. Armor. Protection of armor and helmets is divided into separate zones, depending on which section this zone covers. In some cases, it might be several zones. These are the slots with integrated armor. Integrated armor zones have their own separate durability. For example, you can now reduce your opponent's chest zone armor durability and not damage the durability of other armor zones if you shoot them in the chest. So if a piece of armor has chest armor and arm armor, you can damage the chest part of the armor and not the arms. Integrated armor usually has armor class 2 or 3. Now here's an interesting change that I actually personally like. Let me know what you guys think. An armored collar that protects the neck hitbox has been added for a large number of body armor pieces. If you play Tarkov, you might know that it is certainly a concern now nowadays to leave your neck exposed with the new hitboxes and a lot of the armor is not protecting the neck. If those bullets do stray above your chest but not quite hit you in the face for that head eyes, you are taking significant damage to the neck and a lot of times you can get one shot, especially with some of the higher tier ammo that we tend to deal with in Arena. Adding a bunch of armored collars to the neck is a great change in my opinion. It balances it out and a little bit less just RNG, I kill you randomly kind of stuff. So I think it's nice. Others might disagree, but I think it's a cool change. In addition, ballistic plate slots and integrated armor slots have been added to body armor vests and plate carriers for chest section, for back section, and for side section. Ballistic plates usually have armor class 3 to 6. Just know that this is just a way to separately protect each of the hit zones added to the thorax and stomach, the sides, chest, back. These do stack with the integrated armor, so if you have like level 2 aramid with a level 3 armor plate, you effectively have a level 5 armor there, which also affects the way damage hits you, which we're going to get in to here in a second as well. The dimensions of the ballistic plate zones are the same as the average dimensions of real ballistic plates of that format. Body armor protection is no longer uniform. It now depends on what areas the body armor visually protects. For example, no body armor protects the armpit area. And for those of you playing Tarkov, the armpit area is a bit of a discussion piece. It is a very vulnerable part of the body now that it is not covered anymore. It is interesting to me that they found the need to explicitly state that for the armpit area. So something I'm expecting to happen is a lot of one taps occurring from a higher caliber round, weaving its way under your arm and into your armpit. That is going to be one of the, I think, polarizing changes that come along with the hitbox and armor update transitioning into arena so let me know what you guys think about the whole armpit debate but just be aware that your armpits are not protected and your body armor is only protecting 
visually what you see. So the trooper is not going to protect you nearly as much as it used to. As you can see on this graphic here, it will only protect the areas outlined in red, whereas before it would protect your entire thorax. Damage and armor. Rework the damage through layers of armor. Now when each layer is penetrated, the bullet loses some penetration power and damage depending on the characteristics of the penetrated armor. This folds back into what I was just mentioning a moment ago, where bullets can pierce through your aramid, slow down just a tiny bit, pierce through the metal plate, slow down a bit more, and then through the next aramid and then into your body. On top of armor preventing damage and potentially absorbing bullets, bullets that do penetrate should do less damage when they finally do get to your flesh. Blunt damage now decreases when there are soft armor behind the unpenetrated component, so just a little bit more of what I was just saying. And remove the possibility for bullets to pierce through a character's thorax and stomach. They just recently addressed this in Tarkov, so it's nice to see that they're addressing it here as well. So just essentially integrating the Tarkov system into Arena. More information about hitbox and armor can be found in the following links. Again, like I said before, I will be linking these in the description of the video so you can get to them nice and easy. All right, so those are all of the changes coming up. I tried to go over them as thoroughly as I could without getting too, too deep on it. Of course, in BSG fashion, a lot of the math and numbers and exact changes are not shared here. So we will have to just jump in and kind of explore and find out ourselves. I think that's a lot of part of the fun. We do see a lot of really good changes here. I am actually pleasantly surprised. It looks like they addressed pretty much near everything that I was thinking about. A few more things, of course, that we want them to address that I think are on the roadmap. So a lot to look forward to there. I think this is a fantastic start. If they can keep this up semi-regularly, then I think we're in for a really good system going forward. Let me know what you guys think about these patch notes. If you saw something that surprised you, that you didn't know you wanted, that now you're like, oh, wow, this is really cool. Or maybe they didn't include something that you were hoping they would include. Let me know your general thoughts on the swipe coming up. If you like this kind of content, you want to see more like this, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out a lot. It helps the channel grow. It helps the algorithm. Really appreciate Appreciate all the love and support so far and I cannot wait to jump into this new stuff and start making more videos. I want to bring you guys in, get you involved in some cool tournaments and matches. If you are interested, send me a message here on YouTube, leave a comment, go hit me up in the Discord. You can find that link in the description too and you can sign up for stuff like that. That is all that I have for you guys and until the next one, peace.